one. Right, finally, let's get on with the next job. What I've decided to do is uh, some lettering. And I'm not going to be doing it the way I normally do it because obviously I sandblast. I sandblast virtually all of my lettering unless someone particularly wants hand engraved lettering. Um, so what I've done is chosen a beer tankard, okay, because we tend to do lots of girly things and it's time to do a more masculine thing. So um, a nice big chunky beer tankard, it is not crystal, it is just modern, good quality glass. Okay, um, and I have also chosen this shape because it's not straight up and down and therefore we have got some curves to deal with so I will show you that and um, I have drawn a very simple there we go um, a masculine theme although I love fishing too by the way but I haven't fished for years obviously girls do it too <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, right, uh, there's a man fishing. I have used his arms for the middle part of the F, as you can see, just for a bit of fun. And it is a, a different sort of type of lettering, whereas if you were doing a very classic italic, I would be doing a slightly different method. I would be showing, a different, showing you a different method, which I might do in future. Um, well, I will do in future, um, but for this I've decided to do a more of a blocky kind of thick letter, which um, is quite simple. It's um, a case of outlining and filling it in, um, which is making it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, you can hand draw your letters, they're not difficult. You can trace them from something. Um, print them out from a computer uh, and as for the the fishing guy find a picture and and um, trace it change it a bit um, I put a hat on this guy because he didn't have a hat he was going to get sunstroke and <laughs> although he's probably fishing in the middle of winter um, anyway um, so right here we have obviously fly fishing and that's going to be very difficult to do the the this bit here, the line is very wavy. I can probably take it out the top of the the glass. Um, yeah, I'll probably coming out the top of the glass. You can you can take it all the way round and put a fish on the other side if you fancy. I've done that before. That is not easy because we're going to have to be doing a very fine line correctly one time. Hmm. <laughs> I don't even want to do it. So, right, there's a challenge. Um, and yes, I might even normally sandblast it. <laughs> Cheating. No, not really. Uh, I wouldn't. Um, so, now, I've, as you can see, right, I have got my drawing on a piece of paper. And you can have it on a piece of tracing paper, whatever you like. And what I'm going to do, because our transparent, our medium is transparent, it's glass, so we can see through it. Um, so any of you saying, well, I can't draw, you can draw, you can trace, you can trace, trace, trace. Um, so you can trace this picture off something, off a magazine, off the internet or whatever, and then you can trace it through the glass. So we are making it as easy as possible. Right, now there are a few things. Um, I have drawn a, whoops, how can you see that, can you see that black line, okay, I worked out roughly where I want the line of lettering to go, and I've also drawn a straight line underneath the lettering, mm -hmm. there's a good reason I've done that, and this is where a lot of people will fall down, they will take the line of lettering, put it in the glass above or behind or whatever and it will not be straight because of the curve of the glass and you would um, as a beginner just engrave and then you end up with um, 
writing that I'm going to try and show you this uh, now we'll look at the pink line and look at the black line oops the pink line dips down and the black line okay there it's on the black line and it dips down there and it dips down there now it may not be a lot and I can tell you what if this was higher up it would be even more advanced uh, or extreme not advanced um, so we don't want our lettering to look like it's going like that. I will notice that straight away. If I see a curved glass with lettering on or a logo on or whatever, and it doesn't look like it's straight, in other words, it hasn't been adapted to the curve of the glass, then I pick it up straight away. Um, and if the curve of the glass was going differently, uh, you know, you, this is going in, you get cl a glass going out. Actually, it's pretty close to the up, up and down, to be honest. That's why it's not extreme. Um, it would be more extreme if it was further up. But there's still, there's still that little curve there where I've positioned the lettering. And um, in fact, it's just as it's, just as it's going downwards slightly. Um, so what we've got to do is make sure that that lettering fits to that curve. Now there's so many different ways of doing it, but this particular way that I'm going to do it today, if I can find my scissors. Um, oops, hold on a second. Right, I'm going to snip into this, okay. Uh, there. This is this is how I used to do work 30 years ago, before computers, and I would do all my lettering like this, or do all my artwork like this. Um, okay, sort of tack, sticky stuff as I used to call it, and I'm just going to stick some in Ooh. there. Once I get engraving, as you know by now, I will just engrave and then I'll do a voiceover. Um, but I thought for this little part, it's easier for me to talk as I'm setting it up. Okay, so we've got oops, several little bits of white tack going on there. I can maybe even do another one down here oops oh it's so nice to be back in my workshop oh, long may it last right i hope you're all fitting well by the way now there's another thing we want to do and i'm sitting at the wrong desk for this but um we'll do it roughly shall we i want to make sure that that is going to be in the middle okay so what I will do, um, you can do it a little bit by eye. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Got up and I, <laughs> I forgot that my, my um, mic was attached to me. Anyway, <laughs> so everything fell over. I'm back. Right. So what I actually do is very simple. I will take a ruler and I will take it from the middle of the handle across, okay, and I will measure where the middle is um, and put a mark. So it's difficult to show you this like this. Um, hang on, that is, I haven't got my glasses on, that's eight centimeters, eight centimeters right across. So at four centimeters, I'm going to draw a line. Um, so it's in line from the handle going right across so at four centimeters um, I'm drawing a line so you can see there that's in the middle and it's a funny thing with this I find look at it visually as well let your eyes just check it out a bit and sometimes I find that because of the thickness of the handle where it's measured in the middle shift it shift it a few millimeters away from the handle and that will visually be the center i've been doing that all my life i've never told anyone that 
all these things I just do automatically. Um, so now actually I've shifted it over and it looks more in the center than it did before. So then you might say, what's the point of measuring in the first place? Well, you don't have to, but it does make you, you know, sometimes you don't really see it properly and it's best to just get it as accurate as possible. Okay, so now we've done that. Now, um, if you haven't already worked out where the middle of your picture is, okay, I'm just going to take my ruler, go across the middle of it like that, and that is a very big, actually. <laughs> it's nine centimeters across, so at four and a half, I'm going to put a little mark, which is just above the S, okay? And so that now will line up with my middle. Um, if you are going to do something particular at the back, um, you know, it's uh, then it's, it's different, or if you're going to do it in thirds. Um, but in this case, I'm just working everything on the front. Okay, we've got nothing on the back, unless I add a fish later. You never know. Hmm, actually, <laughs> we've got this, this, um, <coughs> excuse me. Actually, if we've got this fishing line swishing up over the top and out the top of the glass, which we've got to be careful um, because there may be a stress line, I'll check for that. Um, at the back, we could have it re-entering the glass and coming down with a great big fish on the end. Would that look right? Yeah, I think so. Um, we the artists, we can make it up. So now I'm going to line up that middle. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hang five. And I'm bending it where I've um, cut into it. I am bending it. I say bending it like Beckham. I don't think Beckham engraved glass. Uh, right, come on. So I'm just manipulating it because I've cut the lines into it. So I'm making sure that my pink line on the artwork is going, is following the black line. So it'll buckle a little bit, but um, that's fine. As long as you can see it clearly and it's straight. So we've got some folds at the top and we've got some spreading. Uh, oops, where are you? Spreading at the bottom. And as long as that those lines are across each other, you know that your lettering is going to appear straight. That is important. Um, and by the way, in order to get that line on there, well, I mean, it's not difficult. Um, just pa put a pile of, of books or something and, and mark where you want it and then literally turn it against the pen like that and you'll get a straight line. Okay. Um, right, so I'm pretty happy that that is now straight along the line um, and it's in the middle and I think that will be rather fun to do. Shall we get on with it then? Make sure I don't get my head in the way this time. I seem to have got the hang of keeping my pip out of the way. I just wish that I could have the picture filmed from here. Yes, I know we can get a little, um, a little kind of rider's cam, a wet little webcam, but the quality needs to be really good. And I think that um, by filming on this little camera, um, it's better. We'll make do. Anyway, right, let's have some fun. Right. With the drawing behind and a very, very small diamond burr and water dripping, I am doing some very, very simple outlines. But when I say outlines, I am not drawing over the dark line. I am outlining the white shape within the dark lines. I have also speeded this little section up quite considerably. 
Here I have got a very, very sharp rat's tail. And with this, I am going to very simply put in the netting that he's got at the back. It's obviously a, a keep net because he's planning to catch a nice big fish. And so I'm doing some simple crisscrosses, that's all, um, which will represent the, um, the netting. So clearly, obviously, this is not outlining the, the, the white shapes inside. This is <laughs> just some crisscrossing. Um, but, for example, talking about outlining the shapes, the eyes, for example, I will have gone around the dark area, completely leaving that black eye clear glass. And this is very important. Um, and you will you will see um, later on. It's not clear at the moment. It's impossible to show you properly because um, there is a lot of dif distance between the upper surface of the glass and the the paper behind it. And I am looking directly over the top of it, so um, I don't notice the distance. Especially if I close one eye and change it to a 2D image for me as opposed to a 3D um, with both eyes looking down at <laughs> it's hard to explain um, without drawing it on a piece of paper but um, I can get rid of that distance between the paper and the glass surface by closing one eye so it's much much clearer um, whereas you guys are seeing it from the side um, and it's wet as well, which doesn't help um, to show you what's going on. But I do want to work wet because of obviously it's going to cut it so much neater. Um, this is, as I say, this is not crystal. It's just a, a cheaper um, glass. Uh, it's a fair quality glass. But, oh, there you can see the distance quite clearly coming down. <coughs> the side of the F like that, um, quite a lot of distance. Uh, but as I say, the glass is a cheaper quality. It's harder. Um, and so engraving with a diamond on that glass when it's dry um, can leave some chippy edges, which, as you know, I'm not a fan of. Uh, in general, although I have just recently used chippy edges for my coronavirus um, work of art <laughs> um, on the coloured. But anyway, that's a, di uh, that's a different story. Um, you've got art artistic licence, but on something like this, um, yes, you really need it to look as neat as possible. And of course, I'm so used to sandblasting, so I find this a little bit um, frustrating, I suppose. I really want it to look neat. Anyway, as you can see, I am simply outlining the letters. Um, there's, there's really not a lot to this process. I am keeping it very simple um, for you guys. Um, you will see that this it's quite easy to do it's outlining and filling in um, as I say there are many ways of doing lettering uh, but this is just very basic um, right nearly there I think I've speeded up the video yes it is <laughs> I was gonna say that water is dripping hell of a fast but yeah that um, speeded up a little bit I don't normally engrave that quickly. And I've jumped around a little bit. Right, and then I realized that I still hadn't done the top of the F. I hold my breath quite a lot. If I'm doing a straight line like this, um, yeah, I hold my breath. It just stops any, any body movement <laughs> where you don't want it. <laughs> I will be holding my breath when I do the jolly, uh, yes, that, the fishing rod. 
And my fishing rod is going to be just really simple. You guys can add little knobs and blobs and and <laughs> and all those things that come along go along the edge of the rod. I'm just doing the basic shape. Um, I've got a very thin diamond and I've just picked up a scrap glass to to test it on. I want to make sure that it is um, it's nice and smooth. This one I think is a it is a smoother diamond. I don't think it is a, a particularly rough one because again I don't want any chippy edges. I'm holding my breath and I am just following. I can just about see the line um, to pick up. As soon as you feel that you are wavering off, uh, gently lift it up and then try and pick it up again. If you try and get back on track, oh my goodness, then you end up with a wobbly bit. And I think, do I pick it up? Yeah, I'll pick it up. My trouble is at the moment is I can't see very clearly because of the white paper, the water, which always, of course, makes the engraving dull. Um, and it really needs to be particularly accurate. This is, again, a very, very small diamond burr. What have I gone to do? I can't remember. I think I changed. Did I change the burr? Um, no, chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> Maybe I should cut this bit. Hold on. No, I'm wagging my finger. <laughs> um, right, okay. What I wanted to do was double check um, the glass for stress lines. Um, interesting, the top is actually ground down, so I don't well, I didn't think that there would be a stress line here. I've got two pieces of, of Polaroid film. I've turned them so that there's a dark one at the back. Well, it's dark, the, the one at the back I've turned until the whole thing is dark. And then you put the light source behind it. And if there was a stress line, I'd be able to see it. Now, I know that this particular rather nice crystal glass, I won't mention the name, has got a very bad stress line, um, which I was not expecting. So on that particular job, I've had to make sure that my engraving is below that stress line. Anyway, this glass is absolutely fine. It has none. So um, that's really good. I've turned the glass. I have got actually a different burr. I did reach for a even finer burr to tackle this fishing line. Help. <laughs> Hold your breath. Oh dear. I must admit I wasn't looking forward to this. It's a long time since I've done one of these. I've got the uh, drill spinning quite fast and you can see I felt like I needed to lift it up before it went offline and now I can't actually see it. So took away the artwork and I will add to that when I can see more clearly without the paper behind it. Much better idea. I've decided to redraw uh, my line. I don't think, did I? Did I not change that? No. Okay. Yes. No. What did I do? Oh, I changed my mind. You can do that. You can change your mind. Because I added a, a, an extra loop to a picture I'd seen and I thought well, maybe you can't do add too many loops. There is only that one coming down and back like so. Please excuse my chipped nail polish. It decided that it was going to come off my thumb just in time for the video. Right, there you are, you can see that now I'm going to pick it up again, help.
Perhaps you can do it in short bursts, but I like to try and do it in long bursts. This is just a particularly particularly difficult subject, whereas normally um, it wouldn't normally be this long and wavy. And I think I have a little bit of a wobble here. And oh, the little pickup, it's already gone offline. Hold your breath and go. And what I have to do is leave it for the time being and see if I can sort out that little wobble later. That's the only wobble I think that I end up with, I think. There we go. Now sometimes I say look at your point of destination rather than at the burr. And I can't actually tell you exactly where I was looking but there I'm pointing out my little error and so we will leave it for the moment don't go and fix it just yet that will do a little bit later and I actually end up doing it with that very very fine rat's tail burr and and barely barely pick up um, the little gaps sort of before and after um, where I just wobble up and down and I just kind of smooth it out a little bit and it looks a, a tad better but any more than that you start wasting too much time on it and um, it will look terrible and once that's unless you've got a really great polish, polisher um, there's not a lot you can do about it I have got a big polisher but I really I wasn't going to be polishing that out um, so I've just gone over the rod again ever so slightly. Now it is time to fill in the figure. Now you can see roughly what I did uh, regarding outlining the shapes. You can see I still have a dark eye which is very good and I am just roughly filling in. This will begin to look like a typical cartoon. And with a cartoon where you want to um, see the black lines, I will leave as clear glass. However, um, as I don't want this to end up looking like a cartoon, I end up completing it so that it looks a little bit more realistic. But I start off um, engraving it more like a cartoon. And now, this is one way of doing it. It's it's basically surface engraving. I am not intaglio engraving this. I'm not engraving it deeply. That is a different process altogether. Um, this is a more simple process. Don't worry, he's not going to look like <laughs> a very miserable mo monkey faced person. His mouth is very much like a monkey at the moment, but that changes. Um, anyway, so. I'm just filling in, taking care that I don't uh, go over where I don't want to go over. I don't particularly want to have to fight with it, even though I end up actually fighting with it with rubbers. But it's, it's quite important that your face looks good. Um, if you do have to polish out, then polish out an, an area and start again. This is possible, especially as we're only surface engraving this, not going deep, so you can fix it. Right, now I'm procrastinating. Yep. Not sure what I've gone off to do. Okay, small diamond, and <laughs> I know what I want to do. I want to fix the bottom part of his mouth. And I'm too lazy to go downstairs to get the picture that I printed. And so I'm just having a little think. I've slightly improved it. I've brought his top lip, and changed his jaw, and given him a, not top lip, bottom lip, sorry. I think I need to. Give him more of a bottom lip in a moment. Is 
looks like he's had a very bad nose job. It's amazing how by the end of the video it does actually look a lot better, I promise you. <laughs> and, well, not this particular video because this is part one and uh, part two will be following very shortly. To be continued. Right, see you in a moment. <laughs> 